Welcome from wherever you're watching us in Kenya and beyond. This is WTV Solutions Barabarani. My name is Elijah Mwangi. We are right here in Nairobi City, also known as the city under the sun. And our topic of discussion is a matter that has taken Africa by storm, with many left wondering which country will be next in line. Ebola is now a case that has called for national attention. Ebola crisis is spilling out of control in West Africa and now the entire world has a reason to be worried about. This is after some Ebola cases were reported in countries outside Africa, including the United States of America, where a nurse was diagnosed with Ebola after handling an Ebola patient. Now back home it cannot be business as usual, as Kenya is always a risk to Ebola because of its strategic position of being the air traffic hub of Africa. Now, in most cases, every time when there is an outbreak, the number of the victims, or rather the number of those affected, remains to be statistics to many people. But to the families of the victims, it's a personal affair. Some photographers have managed to capture the grim images in Liberia and have a look at what they got. The statistics of those people that have perished as a result of Ebola outbreak are shocking. Here are some of the cases that have been confirmed or suspected. In DR Congo, out of the 62 cases, 35 died. In Guinea, out of the 771 cases, 494 died. In Liberia, out of the 1,698 cases, 871 died. In Nigeria, out of the 21 cases, 7 died. In Senegal, only one case was reported. And lastly, in Sierra Leone, out of the 1,216 cases, 476 people died. Following that report, perhaps uh, the question that is in everyone's mind is, what should you do in the event that you find someone is infected with Ebola? And how is the government prepared to tackle this menace? Bola, ni ugonjwa ambao unasambaa kwa kasi zaidi na ni virusi. Uh, inaambukizwa ukiwa na contact ama mguso ule na mtu ambaye ameambukizwa. Ya uh, na dalili zake ni kutokwa na damu katika opening zote zile kwa mwili. No. Yeah, of course uh, Ebola is a uh, is a disease uh, which has uh, an outbreak in uh, in uh, West Africa and is uh, of course it's a big outbreak. Not that much, but na jua ni ugonjwa tu ishakuja. Watu wajui imetoka wapi. Unajua mimi Ebola hata kwa Kenya hii isipokuwa madaktari wanajua hiyo ugonjwa ni nini. Lemen in Kenya, ama sisi wa Kenya, hatujui hiyo ugojwa. Kwa sababu, hakuna mutu wanaeza sema, 
as our you honor your kids labda wale watu wameenda nje hizo ugonjwa nasikia kazi kwa huko West Africa eh? so Kenya means jawa yesikia mtu wako na hiyo kitu i'm not sure where it is but i know it's a dead red disease kupitia hiyo wizara ya afya eh, kungekuwa na kitu kama mafunzo kwa wananchi wote tu kwa ujumla kupitia njia mbalimbali eh, kupitia vyombo vyote vya habari watu wajulishwe mwanzo kabisa kuhusiana na hizo dalili alafu pili jinsi ya kujiepusha nazo kwa hivyo wale wachache ambao wameweza ku access hiyo habari wao wanajua lakini wale wengine ambao hawajaweza kujulishwa pia sasa hawajui kabisa dalili zake ni zipi na jinsi ya kujiepusha nazo iwapo watakumbana na mtu ambaye akona hizo dalili what can be done of course is a lot and uh, of course it starts with the, the mitigation and also looks at also educating uh, even uh, where we are getting our tourists from they also need to be educated in terms of uh, them knowing the dangers that uh, are there like um, if the visitors are in Europe some of them they tell us we are not going to come to Kenya because of, of Ebola but uh, so far we haven't had uh, any case of Ebola in the country what when you were that side was put the uku until to do Kenya tutafanya minister of health na madaktari ndio wanapikana sasa wa wachukue ile mikakati ya ukweli ya kuzuia hiyo ugonjwa kama ile tu ina hewa maybe or something like that as a matter of fact there has been a lot of misconception about Ebola and how it is transmitted and perhaps watching this clip will give you an idea of exactly what I'm talking about Ebola 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 <laughs> the first thing that uh, should be done of course is to make sure that uh, you don't infect other people so that means that uh, the best thing is to report to the authorities so that they can especially the ministry of health so that they can do they can take the necessary measures to, to counter that okay tumeambiwa kwamba eh, inaambukizwa kupitia kwa ile conduct kwa hivyo eh, mwanzo kabisa ni ujizuie kukumbatiana na watu wa aina hiyo na pia uh, aripoti katika kituo cha afya chochote kilikoko karibu na e, ili waweze kushughulikiwa haraka iwezekanavyo And now to put the matter into perspective we are joined by Nelly Bosire the chairperson of KMPDU Nairobi branch thank you very much it is now evident that Ebola case calls for national attention and uh, maybe just to start us off you can uh, tell us in layman's language what is ebola all about ebola is actually a viral infection and the unfortunate thing about viral infections we know that it is we, they really do not have a cure you can see what has happened with hiv so far we may be able to contain it but we're not able to fully cure it with ebola we haven't even made the baby steps that we had made with hiv it is an epidemic so it comes you know it's a sporadic thing it comes every so often and we've had quite a number of cases over the last century but uh, we still do not have a cure for it and uh, what is the connection uh, between ebola and bats well um, usually with uh, any microorganism there has to be for it to be able to survive in nature there has to be that one host who is able to have it with them without it killing them so that is where they survive from and that's their natural habitat now when it crosses over from the host to non host organisms for some people it for some species it may have no effect but for others it may have devastating effects so ebola is actually thought to naturally exist in the fruit bats 
And uh, this, even in Kenya, we have them in the Mount Elgon region. And they not only have been thought to host Ebola, but also to host other viral infections that are similar to Ebola, like the Marburg virus outbreak that we have currently in Uganda. And now, coming now to the symptoms, uh, how high should the temperature get until now it raises suspicion? Because you've seen, uh, especially there was sometimes in Russia when a Kenyan student was uh, isolated simply because of the body temperatures. Um, for the case definition, what we're looking at, but like what CDC is giving is that the temperature should be at least above 38.5. But we know that anybody who has a temperature of above 37.5 is already having a fever. So what we'll say, low-grade fever. But any person who has a temperature of above 38.5 must definitely be, uh, be investigated in this setup, in the scenario where we are looking at trying to prevent Ebola. Okay, and now assuming an Ebola patient is taken to Mbagavi or Kenyatta Hospital, how should the medics uh, handle the situation? Well, we have talked about the most important thing, protection. Protection of you, the healthcare provider. You need to protect yourself first. Then after that, as we have said, it's a disease without a cure. So everything you do for the patient is to support this patient's function for as far as you can to allow their body to see if they're able to fight out the disease, okay? Usually the patient will have so many uh, symptoms that are the ones that are going to cause death. And you're trying to prevent this as far as possible. And now coming about uh, to do with infection, are uh, all body fluids infectious? Well, once the symptoms resolve, it depends on the kind of test you do. There are uh, what we call the antibody tests, where we are actually testing for the antibodies that your body raised to try and combat the infection. And those can remain in your system even for a lifetime. As of now, we know that CDC says that for people who have suffered Ebola, the same because of those antibodies to have some level of protection against Ebola, which for now they say at least for the next 10 years. Okay, doesn't stop them from contracting a different species of the Ebola virus or a different group of hemorrhagic fever in the same group, but they'll stay for long. So every time you test this patient, if you're doing that antibody test, it will be positive. But if you're actually isolating the viral particle itself, we know that in a seminal fluid, it has actually been proven to remain positive even for three months. So even if you have recovered, then you need to avoid spreading it to your partner for that duration of time, you should have no sexual contact, and if you must, you must use protection. Okay, and now as we wind up, how should someone react if I discover that my neighbor has the virus? How exactly should I go about it? Well, first of all, we need to do contact notification. You have a person you're suspecting to have Ebola. This person should actually be going to the healthcare providers. And if they're not doing that, that's why we need in place facilities to enable you to call the healthcare worker and say, I suspect my neighbor may actually be having this infection. It is upon them now to take over, come and see the patient, test the patient, isolate the patient, and, I mean, look at this, do they fit the criteria for isolation, yes or no? If they do, then it's upon them to actually test the patient and uh, confirm or say that the patient does not have this disease. But to keep yourself safe is to avoid contact. And when I say contact, this is a highly contagious disease. We've talked about all these body fluids. Any small break you have on your skin, any of these fluids coming into contact with this skin, will, with these breaks, they'll actually give you the infection. Any of your eyes, your mucous membranes, your eyes, your mouth, your nostrils, any of the fluids going into any of those orifices, you are bound to get the infection. And now you've got a lot of information concerning what Ebola is all about. And so what's the way forward? What should the government do and what's your part? Now, now we are joined by uh, the chairman of KMPDU, Dr. Victor Ngani. Welcome and thank you very much for keeping time for us. To the solution part, then what should be done? The um, solution is actually quite straightforward and you've already mentioned this. Number one is uh, you need to have public education because the public is a key component in controlling an Ebola outbreak. Number two, all health workers ought to be trained. They need to know what needs to be done. Number three, the protocols that need to be put out to be, uh, so that people can understand what, is, what should you do, when and how should be put in place. Number four, issues of uh, protection. Uh, protecting the health workers to give them that confidence that at least uh, there is, uh, when they take care of a patient who could have Ebola, uh, they have some, some degree of safety must be put in place. Starting with standard precautions, which is 
providing facilities for hand hygiene. This is hand washing and alcohol-based hand rub. Then at the same time to ensure they have gloves in the facilities and that they have running water and that they have um, masks that are needed. Then beyond that, particularly for Ebola, that they should have personal protective equipment. These Ebola suits, you see, should be widely distributed to our health facilities. Then in these facilities, we must have isolation units. And that flow of patients has to be well structured and, and very clear. We need to have a hotline that people can report to issues uh, with regard to Ebola. If there's a suspected case, for example, every Kenyan ought to know where they should go to. Because it's very possible that someone could get through the borders without being detected. And then in the village, but now in the village, who then does the villager call when they see somebody having these bleeding symptoms? And the, uh, the Kenyans ought to know that uh, if you have these symptoms, this person has traveled from this place, there's a chance that you could be infectious. And there are many things to be done as well in, with regard to burial practices. We need to change our, if you were to have an outbreak, then a lot has to change uh, in our cultural uh, practices, for example, burials. Now, all this information ought to have been out there as far back as, uh, as June or July. Uh, we are a bit late at this moment. Well said. There you've got it from our experts. You and I have a role to play in ensuring that Kenya is an Ebola-free country. On behalf of the crew that is working on Solutions Barbarani and the entire WTV's family, a big thank you for keeping it at WTV. Remember, you can send in your comments to our SMS line, that is 258. Our Facebook page is WTV Kenya, and our Twitter handle is at WTVKE. I have been your host, Elijah Wangi. Until next time, God bless.